For at TV, the world is thinking. Someone from the audience asked me to ask you how you would define an activist judge. <laughs> and it led me to think, yeah, the people who are calling activists, uh, judges activists, have generally been neocons and right-wingers, and the appointees to the Supreme Court are extremely activist judges, overturning case law left and right. And it seems to me one of the restraints on free speech that is uh, particularly pernicious is the way that the press has been tarnished as liberal. And anything that's left of a right-wing perspective is called uh, liberal, and the press has fallen over itself to prove that it's not, and essentially uh, shrunk the debate from the center to the right. And I wonder if you think I'm correct in this observation. I, th I think there's a lot to what you say. Uh, I think the, the uh, right-wing talk shows and uh, the people who talk about activist judges have, have pushed the debate to the right, undoubtedly, and it's quite worrying. Um, I want to say a word about the phrase activist judges. It's actually an utterly meaningless phrase. It's supposed to imply uh, judges who will decide things unanchored to precedent or reason, but just uh, arbitrarily out of their own preferences. That's the implication, and the suggestion is that that's only done by liberal judges. Well, if that's what it means, and I think it actually means only an activist decision is only a decision you don't agree with, in fact. <laughs> that's what I think it means. But anyway, if you, were, if you took the, the definition seriously, what's the most activist decision of all time? Bush against Gore, nobody could doubt that. You said it earlier, and you're right. It was a decision without any precedent, which the court said you don't have to pay any attention to in any further case. It was completely arbitrary and ridiculous. Um, but uh, as I say, I think uh, you have to remember this. Put aside that meaningless term, activist, and let's substitute bold or creative uh, judges. We wouldn't have the First Amendment we have today if we didn't have bold and creative judges. You know, the First Amendment lay unenforced <laughs> on the Constitution for 140 years, and then for 60 years after 1931, it was vigorously, creatively, wonderfully expanded till it covered all sorts of activities, including burning flags and carrying a red flag down the street, that was a crime in California. Um, uh, and, you know, many things, just all over the map that were protected by the First Amendment, thanks to what judges did, creative judges. Um, so we don't want to be too uh, quick to uh, object to creative judges. Uh, one of the great decisions was made in this state, by a, by a wonderful judge, Roger Trainer. It's long ago, people don't remember it, uh, but it was at a time when the idea of people of different races marrying each other or having sex together was so sensitive that the justices of the Supreme Court did a dance, literally, to avoid deciding that whether they could constitutionally be prevented from marrying people of a different race. They ref the Supreme Court ducked the issue of miscegenation for for years, until Justice Trainer, Judge Trainer, decided that the Constitution did not allow the punishment of people because they were of different races and they married. And the, you know, it turned out the sky didn't fall, and the Supreme Court adopted that view, and that was creative judging and bra brave judging. And I don't think the word activist has any place in the lingo. <laughs>